All right. Um, so today, Rice Krispies, composition of functions, domain of composed functions. Uh, let's go ahead and start with composition of functions. I want to do one that's just yuck. It's gross. Like you look at it and you're like, that looks like a filet of fish that's been on the floor at McDonald's. And they just wrapped it back up and gave it to you. Just gross. Whatever, Avery. Don't give me that face. Okay. Um, I want to do, let's do a couple of these. Let's do g of f of 1. That means I'm going to plug f into g. So let's first find g of x, g of f of x. g of f of x. I'm going to plug f of x into g. This is a different form, same syntax, means the same thing. So whichever letter comes second means that function is the inner function. So I would prefer you guys if you just watch for a moment. Okay, don't try to write it all down, just watch. Okay, I'm going to plug f of x into g of x. Here's g of x. 2 minus the square root of something plus 3. And I'm plugging f of x into that. f of x is x squared minus 4x. Now I'm going to try to simplify that, and it's actually relatively easy. I'm going to take 2, subtract the square root of x squared minus 4x plus 3. I can't really simplify that any further. That's g of f of x. Now g of f of 1 is going to be that same thing, except what am I plugging in for x? Yeah, I'm plugging in a 1. Okay, so this 1 gets plugged in here and here. So I'm going to come out with an output value, some number. I get 2 minus the square root of 1 minus 4 plus 3. Well, 1 minus 4 plus 3 is 0. So g of f of 1 is 2. First step is just find the function. Second step, plug in the value. For those children at home, I am going to take g of x. No, I was not recording. That would have been bad. And I'm going to plug g into it. So I'm going to take g of x, which is 2 minus the square root of something plus 3. And I'm going to plug g into that. 2 minus the square root of x plus 3. Whew. That'd be nasty. like it. Uh, I eventually want to plug a 6 in there, but I'm not going to yet. I'm going to simplify first. So in here, I'm going to simplify. Uh, it looks like 2 two and 3 make a 5. And now I can plug in a 6. 2 plus 3. Right. 2 plus 3 is 5. Well, the order of operation, parentheses don't matter unless there's multiplication or, like addition just is commutative, can be moved around. Okay, that's good. So now I'm going to plug in a 6. If I plug a 6 in here, let's see what we get. We get 5 minus the square root of 9. Yes, which is 2. So 2 minus the square root of 2 is G, Lady Gaga, of 6. <gasps> no coincidence that Lady Gaga is 5 foot 2 and there's a 2 in that answer. Okay. Hello again. Um, let's say I have F of G of X. That means I'm taking values of X, I'm plugging them into G, and g is outputting values into f. Are you with me? Okay, I'm taking I'm taking values of x. I'm plugging them into g. G get g gives an output that goes into f. Yep. So let's say I want to do f of g of 3. That means I take a 3 
I plug it into g, I make that g of 3, I plug whatever number comes out into f, and I get f of g of 3. All right, you with me so far? Okay. Uh, let's get an example. How about we call, let's call f of x, um, I don't know, uh, x over x plus 3. Let's call g square root of x plus 4. Okay. There are certain values I can't plug into g, correct? So th these values, these, these x values are restricted. They have to be between those values, right? Otherwise, I take the square root of a negative number, I get a problem. So I've, I've initiated this process. I can only plug in values into G that satisfy this. I just found the domain of this, right? I took x plus 4, and I set it greater than or equal to 0, and found x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Right? Now, what is that going to do now? Well, that's going to give me certain outputs from g of x, and what I need them to be, I need those outputs from g of x to satisfy what for f of x? The domain of, what is the one value that can't be plugged into f of x? Negative 3. So this value that comes out of g of x has to satisfy the domain of f. Okay, so really what I'm saying, if the output of g of x has to satisfy the domain of f of x, then g of x can't equal 3. So there were initial restrictions on g of x, right? But it also has to satisfy this. So I'm going to get to a formula here in a minute that is going to look foreign at first, but it'll make sense as we go further. Okay. So these values that get plugged in have to satisfy both the domain of G and what we're going to consider the domain of F. Okay. Here we go. Let's continue. I want to go skip down to, I want to do this problem right here. Actually, let me see. I'm actually going to skip to, okay, I want to I wanna start with a mild one. Let's pause this for those. Of so g of h of x. First thing I want to do is I want to find the domain of g and the domain of h. Okay, let's find the domain of g. Okay, as I see g here. I'm going to restrict x to being greater than or equal to negative 3. Is there anybody that needs more explanation on the domain there? Correct. I can't be negative. I can't take the square root of a negative. So I'm going to call the domain of g negative 3 to infinity. All right. Yep. Is that like negative? Correct. Oh. Right? Okay. You cool? All right. And the domain of h is everything except for negative 1. Agreed? We have a negative 1. We're dividing by 0 problem. OK, here is the formula for how we will find the domain of the new function. Yeah? Correct. Yep. The bottom can't be 0 in a fraction. Okay, so our formula for finding the domain of g of h of x, and just stick with me for a moment, is going to be the domain of the inside function, and where it overlaps with the following, h, or h's output in the domain of the outer function. We'll make sense of that in just a minute. 
So all this is saying in words is it's got to satisfy the original. And then its output has to satisfy the outer functions domain. I think this is going a little better than it did last hour. Last hour, kids were throwing styluses at my head. Would it be styli? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they are, aren't they? <laughs> okay. What is the domain of H? We found it. We found it to be negative infinity to negative one union negative one to infinity. Right? There's the domain of H. We're going to overlap that with H in the domain of G. Now, here's where it gets a little funky. What is H? H is this. Okay, what is the domain of G? Greater than or equal to what number? Okay, now this is not an interval notation yet. I have to actually solve this. I have to find what values of x would make this greater than or equal to negative 3. So let's go ahead and solve. And then we can do an overlap in a moment. So let's do it. Um, I'm going to call negative 3, negative 3 over 1. So what are your thoughts? What should I do here? Hari. Cross multiply. Awesome. So I'm going to take negative 3 times x plus 1. I'm not going to change the inequality here. And I'm going to take two ti 2x times 1. OK, so mathematically, I just have to distribute. And I'm going to go ahead and solve. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So I get negative 3 is greater than or equal to 5x. And when I divide, I get x is less than or equal to negative 3 fifths. The outputs of g have to be less than or equal to negative 3 fifths in order for this to work. Yes, Ella. We are the smartest. Yes. OK, so I'm going to overlap this domain negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity. I'm going to overlap that thing with this new domain for G. Is it G? Yeah, G H in the domain of G. That would be x is less than or equal to negative 3 fifths. Oops, that's wrong. Negative infinity to negative 3 now, where would those overlap? Let's draw a number line. Not equal to negative 1. Here's negative 1. And means both need to be satisfied. Here's 3 fifths. I'm going to shade every, oops, negative 3 fifths. I'm going to shade everywhere below. Yeah. Negative 3 fifths is greater than negative 1, right? I want to know where both are satisfied. Well, both would be satisfied from negative infinity up to what? Negative 1. I've got a gap there. And negative 1 up to and including negative 3 fifths. This would be the domain of g of h of x. Uh, the other part is to find the new function, right? Which means we're just going to take, uh, finding the function is the easy part. I'm going to take h of x, plug it into g of x and simplify it. All right, we can do that in a moment. I'm going to run out of time. So we can do that on the side. But this is the difficult part. This is overlapping the domain of the inside function with the output of the inside function over, over the domain of the outside function. Oh, my gosh. 